Welcome back to another clay video. Today we are going to create some of my favorite captures from Super Mario Odyssey. Let's start out by creating Goomba. In my opinion, this is the most iconic Mario enemy out there. I started out by creating four Goombas, but as the video goes on, it turns into two. I had a bit of trouble with these Goombas, and I stacked it just a little bit too high. But luckily, I was able to somewhat save this creation and still end up with a nice Goomba figure. Now this section of the video is dedicated to my Patreon supporters. Each month I have a contest, and the winner of that contest gets a clay figure sent to them in the mail. So I asked everybody to submit their artworks of a Goomba, and whoever the winner is will get this Goomba Mario stack as a prize. I want your help to decide who should win this Goomba figure. On screen you'll see the three different artworks that were submitted. You can vote by commenting either 1, 2, or 3, and whoever gets the most votes is the winner. Let's get back into the clay figure. This one is going to be the Mario Goomba, so the eyes are a little bit more detailed than the other ones. I'm indenting all of the eyes where the white dot for the center of the eye is going to be. And we can fill that in with some white. A very important thing that you can't miss while creating a Goomba is the Goomba Bump. Without this bump, their eyebrows would fall right off of their faces. So this bump is very important to add into your Goomba. The eyebrows are one of those details that look like they would be kind of complicated or hard to get right, but they're actually very simple. And by mostly attaching them onto the head, we can make sure that they don't really break off if you bump them. The Goomba stack is one of my favorite captures in Mario Odyssey because you can just make this tower so tall in some levels. It's not easy, but on the moon, there's an area just full of a ton of Goombas and you can tower this up as much as you want. Well, not as tall as you want, but you can get it up to 30 Goombas and that's pretty high. The Mario mustache and hat is something you're going to see on all of these captures. And it's pretty funny how different these enemies look with a Mario hat and a mustache. And these captures really give you so many more ways to interact with the world that you just couldn't in other Mario games. In this video, I'm going to be using this rounded baking tray, since my normal one is currently full of the 30,000 subscriber map. I'd say I'm about halfway done with it, so you should probably expect that for next week's video. Now our Goombas are ready to get baked. Our Goombas had a little bit of an accident in the oven. I think I just stacked it a little bit too high with no wires for a support, and this Goomba just got trashed. So we can just get rid of him and hopefully use this spare Goomba as a new base for the tower. It looked like it was going to work out really well, but Somehow, the glue just wouldn't stick between the two clay figures. So instead, I just decided on using the two Goombas from the top of the tower, and I think it still looks good like this. Using a red marker, we can finish up Mario's hat, and move on to the next capture, which is the Lava Bubble. This capture can be both very fun and very frustrating. Sometimes you have to be so precise jumping between puddles without touching the ground, and after 20 attempts, it can get pretty annoying. But overall, I would say it's a really fun ability to use. I did this cool blending method between the red and the orange, and I think it looks really nice for a lava pool. I swirled together a couple different shades of yellow to make this little fireball, and I think that just adds a little bit more into the character. Taking a brownish red, we can create all of the details on the face. And a little bit more of the body color for the nose. And on the bottom, I made these little spikes. I thought it would kind of help to make it look like he's jumping out of the lava. These ended up being a little bit too big, and I ended up smashing them down quite a bit. 
Usually when I stick a wire into something straight up, it just kind of falls over and it's not very stable, so I decided to do it this way instead, because now with all of the weight and pressure of the base, it doesn't even have any room to move around. Let's get our little Fire Mario onto the wire, and we are ready to get baked. After baking, we just need to simply smack the M onto the hat, And now we can move on to our third and final capture, which is Pokio. At first the name might sound kind of weird until you realize what this enemy does. It shoots its nose out and pokes into the wall, so Pokio is kind of a perfect name. You can use this ability to basically stick yourself in the wall, launch, and repeat. By doing this you can scale really tall walls that you couldn't have gotten up otherwise. I learned this method last week when I created these little palm trees, and it came in very handy for creating the tail. Stripes were always really daunting to me on figures because I didn't really know how to make them, but now that I know of this method, it's actually not that bad to create things with stripes. This is going to be the mask, or I guess it's the face, of Pokio. I'm using some lighter blue to accent the eyes on the bottom just a little bit. And we can put that onto the body and add in the beak. Just like the others, we need the mustache and the Mario hat. The feet are very easy to create, and I feel like pretty much everything in the world of Mario has really basic feet. The final detail before baking is to create the wings. These are fairly simple, but they look really nice. And now Pokio is ready to get baked. After baking, let's add in the M. And here it is, three of my favorite captures from Super Mario Odyssey. I hope you all enjoyed the creation of these Mario captures. It was a lot of fun, and I think I might make some more. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.